Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, this is recording lecture for uh, chapter 9, stress transformation. So here we will cover uh, 9.1, 9.2, 3 and 4, right? Uh, 9.1 is plain stress transformation. 9.2 general equations of plain stress transformation. 9.3 is principal stresses and maximum inflation stress. And 9.4 more circle, more circle uh, for plain stress. Basically for more circle actually, uh, there is a, there is another method, uh, alternative method for uh, nine point two nine point three, and uh, before we go, before you go to this uh, chapter chapter nine stress transformation, you need to understand chapter eight, right? Uh, if you still do not understand how to find this resultant loadings and I mean the the state of stress, uh, the final state of stress for uh, combined loadings, I think you better go back to chapter eight first, okay? Then, uh, so let's start with uh, place stress transformation. So, uh, you have seen this before, the general state of stress here, right? Where you have the sigma i, sigma y, and sigma z, of course, in 3D. And then uh, you have this, uh, the three other components, tau xy, tau uh, xz, and tau yz, right? And then if, if uh, you simplify further, for instance, you analyze in single plane of plane stress, then you can you can eliminate, actually there is a meaning for this, actually for plane stress that uh, you don't have sigma z, not you have sigma z, sigma z is zero because it's very thin, for instance, in plane stress. The, the plane is, uh, sorry, the, the geometry is uh, thin, so you say that the sigma z is zero. So you can reduce this to become sigma x, sigma y, and tau x, y. Of course, there is a concept we have to, uh, for that, but uh, it's beyond the scope of this uh, chapter. Right, and then what you can see is from this three degenerate state of stress, you can reduce into plane stress of sigma x, sigma y, and tau x, y only, right? And then what you have is for this uh, general state of plane stress, you have only sigma x, right, in the x direction, sigma y in the y direction, and tau x, y in x, y direction, right? And then having said that, this is this plane, Okay, this element, it follows the original x and y configuration, right? What happens if you rotate that one? I mean, if you say that, okay, instead of x, y like this, you rotate it like this or like this. I mean, with an angle. So what happened? So this is what you're going to do in this chapter, okay? Whatever you have done previously up, up to chapter 8, right? That one, actually, you follow the x, y, uh, x, y, z or x, y, in this case, uh, for plane, configuration of the one that you, uh, that you define, you predefine before you solve that, right? But actually, this element don't necessarily have to follow x, y, it can be rotated. That's what it means here. It can be rotated by this angle theta, all right? So if you rotate, of course, here, if having said that, if, if you have x, y like this, then theta is zero. Okay, but you can rotate that and you have the same actually, the same state of stress. It's just the values will be different. But this, the, the, this and this, the rotated one, is the same actually. That's their equivalent, right? I'm not saying the values are the same. Sigma x prime, sigma y prime won't be the same. Tau x prime, y prime won't be the same. But the thing is, the state is the same. They are equivalent state, all right? Why I said that? Because later on you will see why this is more so, okay, this from this slide, the most important thing is that you realize this element can be rotated with angle theta, right? Why you want to rotate? You will see that later on. Okay, so we go to the next one, the uh, next uh, topic, which is uh, general equations uh, of plane stress transformation. So before we do that, please uh, understand this sign convention. Remember, normal stress, positive outwards, okay? Negative inwards, okay? While positive shear stress, like this one, tau x, y will, for the, for, the, for the right hand phase, okay, of the element, it will be positive going up. If it goes down for that phase, for that phase, it will be negative. So we will do this, right? So this is the positive sign convention, right? Even if you are uh, and, and uh, the, the rotation, okay, if you follow x, y, x, y, so if you do the rotation, uh, you the right hand rule so the theta will be positive 
anti-clockwise. Okay, anti-clockwise will go safety down. Right? So this is what I explained just now. Okay, if you rotate anti-clockwise theta, then it becomes a positive angle. If it is clockwise, then it is negative angle. Right? And then remember the normal stresses will be positive going upwards. Inwards, I mean compressive will be negative. And tau xy will be positive if the right hand side, okay, going up. Right? Right, so this is how we derive the this stuff, general equations of plane stress transformation. So how you derive it is you cut it, okay, you cut here, and then you draw the forces, right? All these are forces, and then from this forces you do the sum of f x prime. Okay, x prime now it is the theta angle, right? Uh, equals to zero, f y prime equals zero, and then you solve this, then you will come up with this two. Uh, these two things. One is this tau x. Uh, sorry, sigma x prime and tau x prime y prime. Okay, what are they? They are basically this sigma x prime, right? And tau x prime. Okay. X prime y prime. Sorry. When your angle, your sorry, your plane, your element has been tilted to sigma x, which is theta clockwise from original x okay what is this sigma sigma y prime this is for another one which is here uh, actually uh, okay this sigma y prime is actually if you understand this actually this is from theta plus 90 isn't it theta plus 90 theta from x to y prime isn't it from x to y prime so theta plus 90 so this one sigma y prime here this equation right this is actually from sigma x from this sigma x prime but uh, the theta here you put theta plus 90 so it becomes like this okay but again the most important thing is these two actually if you understand these two that's more than enough sigma x prime tau x prime y prime all right okay now we go to the uh, example that that you want to rotate i mean using this method right so for instance, you have this uh, air, airplane fuselage, okay? And then you have a point over here, and then you take out this point, you represent this point as the plane stress, okay? And then you have this 80 megapascal, okay? And 50 megapascal and 25 megapascal. So from here, you should realize by now that, okay, oh, by now it's not there. But if you use the first method, okay, you cut, because you have the question asks you to represent the state of stress, the same thing, the same, uh, the same element, uh, oriented 30 degree clockwise. So you rotate this clockwise, okay, minus 30 degree, isn't it? So what you have to do is you have to cut 30 degree, right? This 30 degree. When you cut this and then you follow those methods, then you will end up with your sigma x prime as this and sigma tau x prime y prime as this. And of course, when you do the 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 other one, we will have your minus twenty five megapascal, all right. And then you state, uh, you express it as this state. You see, you rotate it thirty degree clockwise. Then the sigma, sigma x prime, sigma y prime, and tau x prime y prime will be different, but they are equivalent with the one that you saw previously, which was this, right? Now we go to the one which is simpler, which is we use the equation, right? We don't have to cut. So for instance here, you have the element, right? And then you have this 80 megapascal, you have 20, 50, you have 25. So you, have, you need to interpret here. What is this 80? What is this 50? And what is this uh, 25? So you have to understand x, your x, right? Going to the right. Y going up, isn't it? So your sigma x is this, but the value is negative, right? Your sigma y is this, but the value is uh, and the value is positive. And your your tau x y the shear stress is this, and the value is negative. Okay, you have to see this. So that's why your sigma x equal to minus eighty, right? Compressive sigma y equals to fifty tension. Tau x y equal to minus 25. Why? You see the one which is on the right hand 
side, the right hand face, it is going down. So it is minus 25 meter Pascal, right? And then the angle is, okay, look at the question. You rotate it 30 degree clock, clockwise. So you rotate 30 degree clockwise, it means the angle is, theta is, angle theta is minus 30. Okay, why minus? Because counterclockwise, anticlockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. Right? So you, you in order to do this, you want to find the if you rotate 90, uh, sorry, 30 degree clockwise, what happened to the to the state of stress? So the first one is you do this sigma x prime, right? Go back to the equation. Where is the equation? This equation, right? Then you put the values sigma x, sigma y, tau xy, theta minus 30. Okay, if you put it here, then it will be different, it will be wrong. All right, and then you will end up with your sigma x prime equals to minus 25 megapascal. Simple, is it? And then for tau x prime y prime, okay, you go back to your equation, this tau x prime y prime, you put into the equation of this, you put sigma x, sigma y, and tau. Of course, tau xy as well, and then you put uh, the theta, sorry, theta of minus 30 will end up with your tau x prime, y prime as minus 68.5, eh, sorry, minus 68.8 megapascal. So you see what happened here. So here, what happened is from, okay, this element from x, you rotate it to x prime, isn't it? That's why you have this sigma x prime of, okay? You rotate it minus 30 degree, y prime is again because it's clockwise, isn't it? And then what happened is that on that surface, on that surface, this sigma x prime, when you rotate it minus 30 degree, you will have your sigma x prime and tau x prime y prime, okay? Which is this and this, okay? This is your sigma x prime, right? Which is minus 25, right? And tau x prime y prime here is minus 68. That's why here it goes down. See, this one, it goes down. On that surface, on that face, going up positive, going down negative. Forget the rest. I mean, that those are complementary, but I'm talking about this surface, okay? Because we are focusing on this x prime axis that you rotate from original x, you rotate to minus 30 degree, okay? So what happened to, others, to the other side? Okay. So for, for the other side, what you have to do is, okay? Now you have analyzed this surface, right? CD, okay, this CD. Okay, for this surface, what happened to this surface? Of course, uh, whatever whatever you have on this CD, you have you have the same on this, right? Okay, so we're going to see on what happened to this BC. For this BC, you will rotate how much? Hmm? You will rotate how much? You will rotate 60 degree. Why? Can you see that? Okay, this x prime and y prime, so called y prime, is 90 degrees, isn't it? So, x prime to x is 30. So, x to x y prime, x exists to y prime exists, should be 60. So, which means that this angle you rotate as positive 60. Why positive? Because it is counterclockwise. And 60 because you take the whole x prime y prime as 90 degrees, isn't it? So, that's why here, you, you have the same sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy from previous one, right? But to analyze the BC, this BC, you need to rotate it at 60 degree angle, right? So this is what you're doing, okay? That's why I said here, though the, this one we call it as sigma x prime, okay? But actually, I mean, if, if you are unsure, then you can use the sigma y prime equation before, but actually that, that's not the real... I mean, the correct way, the, the most correct way. The most correct way is actually from X to analyze CB, surface CB. From X, you rotate it 60 degree clockwise to find, to have this axis, which is normal to face BC, right? So you use the same equation of sigma X prime, but your, uh, uh, your theta here hmm, is 60 degree, positive 60 degree. And you will end up with sigma x prime s minus 4.15 megapascal, right? 
and then for your top exponent y prime okay which is on this surface uh, cb you will have your value as positive 68.5 less this one is negative this one is positive right so what happened is on this surface you will have compression of 4.15 right this one isn't it and the shear stress of 68.8 megapascal which is this one all right going up okay going up so now it is correct i mean I, what happened whatever happened here and there is just the equivalent okay the complementary and equivalent stresses right of course you have 44.15 here you have 44 as well compression you have 21 sorry 25.8 megapascal here you will have 28.5 megapascal here as well right and then the rest are complementary shear stresses right so now we go to the next one which is the intent principal stress right this is the the one of the one of the two most important things uh of doing this stress transformation actually you will see that so what is this principal stress principal stress okay why here in this chapter we call it as in plane because you do 2D, right? So you have only two. Um, in this case, you have two principal stresses, sigma one and sigma two. Later on, we're going to see that. Uh, but if you do 3D, then basically you have three principal stresses, sigma one, sigma two, and sigma three. So now why they call it as in plane here again, in principal stress is because you have uh, this principal stress in the plane, X, Y plane, only the plane, not on the volume, volumetric element, right? So principal stresses, they represent what is the maximum and what is the minimum normal stress at the point right what does it mean by that when you rotate this element to a certain angle we call it as uh, this one uh, theta p okay principal stress angle you will reach your maximum and minimum normal stress okay at this point there is no shear stress Okay, at this point, at this theta p, when you rotate that to theta p, there is no shear stress, right? So how do you do that? If you understand this equation from before, right? This equation from before, sigma x prime close to blah, blah, blah. Actually, this sigma x prime is a function of theta, isn't it? Depending on the angle, how much angle you rotate and whether it's positive or negative, isn't it? Because sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y, they are all just... Uh, I mean, not just, but yeah, they are, they are the constant, right, in this equation. But theta is the variable because you, could, you can rotate at any angle. Hmm? So what happened here is, what happened if you differentiate d sigma over d theta? And then you equal, equate that to zero. You equate that to zero. So you will get your maximum and minimum values. All right? So this one so you differentiate that with respect uh, the normal stress with respect to theta right and then you equate, equate that to zero so you solve that one then you will have this relation to find your principal angle yep. now your theta hmm, will become the principal angle okay because this shows that at this when you rotate to this theta p okay now you reach the maximum all right I, go, I hope you understand this from calculus, right? And then you put this back, theta p here. Then your uh, your sigma one and sigma two. Okay, your principal stresses. Now we call it as sigma. Okay, your principal stresses call it as sigma one and sigma two. Sigma one, the the maximum normal stress. Okay, the maximum principal stress. Sigma two. Okay, this one and two, one and two. Sigma 2 is the minimum principal stress, right? We become like this, the equation, when you put theta p. Okay, so what happened here is, this is the original one, x, y, right? And then you rotate to theta p1, okay, from x to x prime, you rotate to theta p1, which is the principal, uh, the, the, the angle for principal stress, right? And then you will see you have your sigma one principal stress okay sigma one and of course if you rotate uh plus 90 more uh, theta p1 plus 90 you will have the one which is on the surface which is your sigma two okay 
Of course, this is prevalent. So these are the state that I mentioned, right? We'll do uh, examples on this. So next we go to the maximum in plane. Okay, that one, if this one in plane, this process, if you rotate to theta P1 to reach the uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2, the principal stresses, right? The maximum principal stress sigma 1 and minimum principal stress sigma 2. And you can see that here you don't have the shear stress at all, right? Another rotation that is important is you rotate it to reach the state of maximum intent shear stress. Shear stress, maximum. Shear stress, intent. Intent again, x, y, right? So in this case, like what you did for the theta over, uh, sorry, the sigma over the theta, now you do for the tau over the theta, right? The tau in terms of theta, you differentiate that with respect to theta, equates that to, you equate that to zero, and then you will solve that and you will get your tangent theta. I mean, this is the principle. Okay, this, this is theta S is the uh, angle of your uh, maximum inflation stress. All right, express as this. So you rotate to this angle, then you will get that. And then you put it back into this uh, tau equation, the previous tau, tau equals to blah, 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 theta. You put it back and then you will get your equation for tau max in plane hmm, as this one. Sigma x minus sigma y over 2 squared plus tau x y squared. All right. And at this, when you rotate this to theta s, okay, the maximum inflation stress uh, angle, you have this tau max in plane and you have also your average normal stress acting on the on the all four surfaces right all x prime and y prime all and this sigma average is sigma y the sigma x plus sigma y over two average of the normal stresses right you have sigma x no y, you average that one divide by two plus divide by two right so let's look at the example view of we do uh, tutorials okay for instance you see this bar right uh the, the circular bar solid circular bar you apply a torsional moment on it t and then if you take one element here one point okay and then you take an element so you have this uh state of stress okay tau which is a pure shear pure shear stress right in this x y but again this is pure shear stress in, because it's in x, y, okay? I mean, you define this, this is x, right? This is y, isn't it? What happens if you rotate this element? You won't have the same, the same, the same, I mean, you have the equivalent uh, element, but it won't be pure shear anymore. This is pure shear because you, because this is the one which follows x and y in this case. Right? So the question asks you, what is the maximum in plane shear stress? And the associated, of course, when you have the maximum in plane shear stress, you have the associated average normal stress and B to find the principal stress. So let's follow the function from before. What is sigma x? Zero. What is sigma y? Zero. Why? You can see that there is no sigma x. Okay. There is no sigma y. Right? So zero. Tau xy is minus tau. Y minus, look at the right hand side. Can you see that the, the shear stress for that right side going down? So it is minus tau. Okay, minus tau x y. Okay, <clears throat> so maximum in plane shear stress, you can use the equation from before, right? Just put the equations and then you will see that it's plus and minus tau, isn't it? While the sigma average is zero because sigma x is zero, sigma y is zero plus then r and by two point zero, right? So what happened here is, Uh, okay, so what happened here is the maximum in plane <coughs> shear stress is actually this state. Okay, when you when did you get this maximum in plane shear stress in this problem? It is on this state, which is on this state. Right? This is the maximum in plane shear stress itself. You understand that? Right, <clears throat> and then I mean the 
if you if someone asks you what is the uh, angle for that one, I mean the rotation, the rotation is zero. As if as that, you don't have to rotate. This is the pure shear, pure shear stress. Uh, here, the state of pure shear stress here is actually the 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 state that gives you the inflation stress, right? Okay. Now, what happens if you rotate that one? You can find the principal stress from that, right? You use the equation from before, okay? And then you can see that actually the principal stress is 45 degree angle or minus 45. So actually, yes, if either you rotate it clockwise, uh, sorry, anti-clockwise 45, like this one, or you rotate it anti-clockwise minus 45, right? And then you, or, uh, and then you find the sigma 1 and sigma 2. From this equation, you will get sigma 1, uh, equals to tau and sigma 2 equals to minus tau, right? One is tension, one is compression, okay? And then uh, you see that you rotate this, okay? If you rotate it uh, positive clockwise, 45 degree, you will reach your sigma 2, which is tau. <clears throat> well, if you uh, rotate it counterclockwise, uh, sorry, clockwise 45 degree, which is minus 45, you will reach your one. So that's why here, theta P1 goes to minus 45, which is this, it will give you, you rotate this to minus 45, it will give you sigma 1, which is tau, right? If you rotate it 45 degree, which is tau, uh, uh, sorry, this, uh, the sigma 1, angle for sigma 1, then it will give you this angle, which is 45 degree. It will give you sigma 2 equals to positive tau, okay? Uh, there is a mistake. This one should be sigma 2 equals to minus tau, right? Minus tau and tau. Okay? Right, and then, oh, minus tau. Okay, sorry, I mistake. Sorry, this is correct. I mean, sigma 2 equals to tau, but uh, as you can see, the direction is compressive, so you take the one which is minus here, while this one, sigma 1 here is uh, tension, right? Right, so next we go to the one which is in this case. Can you see that this bar? Hmm, it is. It is. Uh, there is a unit axial compress uh, tension. Sorry, tensile force E applied to it. So if you take the point here and then you represent it in the form of element, you will have the pure tension, right? Pure tension sigma. <coughs> so <coughs> we should ask you to find the the principal stress and the maximum influential stress associated. And as you take the normal stress. In this case, it's simple. <coughs> sigma x is sigma, isn't it? Sigma y is zero. There is no 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 sigma. Okay. X. Y. Sorry, the x should be horizontal. Okay. Sigma is zero. Eh, sorry, sigma is equal to sigma. Sigma y equals zero. That is y is zero. So if you want to find the principal stress, okay. You put into the equation, then you will see that sigma 1 equals to sigma sigma 2. Sigma 2 equals to 0. As simple as that. I mean, this is what doesn't mean by that, like what you have seen before for the pure shear. This is the so called uh, pure tension. Okay? This state itself is the principal stress sigma 1. Okay? This is, so the theta is, theta P1 here is 0. You don't have to rotate. Right? <clears throat> well, on the other hand, for uh, maximum influential stress, right? If you put into the equation, I mean, first you find the angle, right? You have to rotate 45 degree or minus 45 degree. And then you put into the equation again, sigma x, sigma y, and tau. So of course, sigma y and tau so are zeros. You will see your tau max in 10 as plus minus sigma over 2, which is half of the applied uh, shear stress, right? I mean, sorry, internal shear stress. Uh, sorry, internal normal stress uh, sigma <clears throat> so and and of course you can find your average to be same half half of uh, sigma right half of the applied sigma, applied sigma and then what you have to do is this one will be rich when you rotate it 45 degree hmm? anti-clockwise you see when you rotate the anti uh, 40 degree anti clockwise, you will reach the you will reach this shear stress, right? Right, which is minus sigma over two, 
minus, that's why it goes down. Okay. And of course, you have the positive tensile sigma over 2. Okay. Okay, we'll do these examples. Uh, sorry, tutor, uh, tutorials on this. Uh, this problem is uh, sorry, 9, 11, and 12. Okay, now we go to the final part. Muscle for brain stress. In this case, in this topic, actually, you have and this, this I said about the alternative method. If you don't use that equation that you have seen before, you use this muscle. Okay, you will have the same results, but I prefer you guys to, I mean, I, I suggest you guys to learn more circle more because this is more comprehensive. Okay, when you have drawn this kind of circle, this is the circle. This is the circle. If you have drawn this circle, so actually you can control it. Any rotation is fine by now. Okay? You can you can rotate at any point that you want, at any angle that you want. Okay. <clears throat> so this is from before. Okay. You have defined your sigma x prime or top x prime like this, right? And then, <clears throat> please recall your sign convention, okay? Uh, okay, no. Now we're going to represent this uh, state of stress into this more circle, right? So before you do that, you have to know the sign convention of sigma. It, it is positive going to the right. While for tau, it is positive downwards. So basically, before you draw the circle, of course, because this is a, a, the graph, right? So you need to have x and y axis. Hmm? So in this case, your x axis is sigma, hmm? horizontal axis is sigma or epsis k. It goes positive to the right, like the normal x axis. Okay. While your y axis or your ordinate axis is tau, okay but it goes downwards as positive you see this tau goes downwards as positive don't make mistake here if you do that way around then we're wrong everything is wrong right and okay and you need to know of course okay now you have established sigma and top axis right so in order for you to draw the circle you need to have this center of the circle C, right, and reference point P. Sometimes this book, they use P and sometimes they use A. So I mean, as, as long as you understand this, this then it's fine. Okay. So this C, <coughs> this center of the circle C, they look, the, the, the coordinate is sigma average tau equals to zero, right? Now, remember, put this, put this into the, the graph now. This is always sigma and tau, isn't it? The, the coordinate, sigma and tau, sigma and tau. So the sigma of this point C, the center, is sigma average, okay, which is sigma x plus sigma y over 2, while the tau is 0. All right, this is the center. And then your reference point P here, right, is sigma x, okay, for sigma. While for uh, tau, it is tau x y, right? So these two are the starting points for your circle. So you need to know the circle, the cent, the sorry, the center first of the circle, which is sigma average zero. Okay, sigma is sigma average tau is zero. While for point P, the reference point or point A, the reference point is the, the coordinate is sigma equal to sigma x tau equal to tau x y. Right, and then you you see uh, you find the radius from this. Right, I hope you. I mean, I I hope you can check here how on how do we do that, and then you can draw the circle. Right, of course we're going to to go into details of that. Okay, so this is what I said. The reference point of A is the coordinate of sigma x tau x y. Right, the reference point. The center is sigma average for sigma tau is zero, all right? And when once you have, uh, of course you have, you have the radius as this, right? Once you have drawn this circle, you remember your principal stress, sigma one and sigma two, principal stresses, maximum principal stress sigma one and maximum sigma two. From this more circle, this is your sigma one, 
this is your sigma 2. Right? That's why he said that sigma 1 is the max, sigma 2 is the minimum. Right? Can you see that along this circle, I mean around this circle, at any point around this circle, sigma changes, right? And the, the max the minimum is sigma 2. It increases, reaching sigma 1 as the maximum. Okay, so these two are the maximum. Uh, sorry, the, the principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2. Right? While on the other hand, you have another one. I mean, important point, if you draw vertical uh, line, can you see that this is the maximum tau? And this is maximum tau, so uh, minimum tau in this case, yeah. But of course, they have the same values, right? So this is, this is what? Tau tau max in plane, the maximum in plane shift stress, right? So that's why I said this most good is nothing new, it's just the, the uh, another alternative method to find this principal stresses and the maximum information stress and and any any I mean any stress for any rotation, all right? Okay, so how to draw this? First, like I said, you establish the coordinate system of x y from here. Okay, this is the original uh, state of stress, right? X y x so, so it has my x and y to x y so x goes this way, y goes up, right? And then you define sigma sigma y is to x y course from here i mean this is the same like what we have done before and now we go to the Moscow, which we have to establish sigma and tau right remember positive sigma goes to the right same as x but positive tau it goes down not goes up it goes down for positive tau right and then you plot the center which is the coordinate is sigma equals to sigma average tau equals to zero okay sigma equals to sigma average tau equals to zero so this is the center Right? Sigma average is what? Sigma x plus sigma y over 2. Okay? And then reference point. A or P, whatever. Sometimes they use this. So this reference point. What is the coordinate? Sigma equals to sigma x, tau equals to tau x, y. Right? So you take sigma equals to sigma x, tau equals to tau x, y. Right? And then, you, you know your C, you know your P, you can have your R, okay, the radius, Okay, the distance between them. And then from this R, you can draw the circle. You can find this sigma 1, sigma 2, and of course your tau max, which is indicates your tau max in pain, which is uh, maximum in pain. stress is, is radius itself, right? From C to this point, to the maximum point is radius, isn't it? This is radius. So just radius. Simple as well as that. Okay. So let's look at this example. <clears throat> so you have this uh, shaft, solid shaft, uh, fixed at point, um, not point here, at this point, at this uh, location, and then you apply the compressive force P, you have by the bending moment M, you have the moment T, right? And then you take one point A, okay? You, you take it as an element, uh, plain element, and then you see that, okay, now I have this, compression of uh, 12 megapascal and uh, whatever stress is 6, six megapascal. So first thing first, what are these? You have to establish x, y. Okay. Of course, this coming from this. Okay, to get this, to get this, chapter 8. That's what I said before you go to chapter 9. This is chapter 8, right? Now chapter 9, you want to, uh, you want to find this. What is the maximum? maximum stresses that will occur okay okay now uh please, please okay so you establish x y so basically you have your sigma x you have your sigma y and you have have your sigma x you have sigma y and you have your your tau so tau x y what are they sigma x minus 12 isn't it minus 12 compression 12 sigma y is zero because there is no uh, normal stress in y direction, isn't it? While your tau x y is minus six, not six minus six because you again look at the right hand uh, surface. 
you have it, the shear stress going, going down. So it is minus six megapas six megapascal, all right? And then to construct the circle, you know your sigma x, you know sigma y, you know your tau x y. You can find the average which is the center, right? The location, the sigma location for the center. So you have this uh, average, and then uh, you know the center. You know the p. P is sigma x, which is minus twelve, and tau x y, which is minus six. So you plot it as here. Uh, actually, not here. This is this is for the original one. I mean, here this one. Okay, that's why it's strange, right? And then, uh, okay, don't, don't look at this. I mean, this is the original one, so don't, don't, it's not like don't you look at this, but uh, this is the original one, so I mean, we don't show cosine minus here. So, okay, now you find the radius, okay, how to find the radius, so you go back to here. So, this is C, which is C my average minus six, isn't it? Minus six, okay. From sigma and my uh, tau exists, you go to the back minus six, and then a is so the a is minus twelve minus six, so minus twelve, right? Minus twelve my, minus six. The tau going down is positive, so going up six, okay? Minus six over here. So you can have this radius. How do you do that? Have the radius, you have to find this, this one have to find this one of course this one is six right what about this one this one is 12 minus six isn't it 12 minus six is six so it, in this case this radius is you see six squared plus six squared it is 8.49 uh, megapascal right and then to find the shear stress now uh, sorry principal stress now you draw the more circle you draw the circle from c to a you draw the circle okay and then you got these two points, which are point B and point D, which is the circle which intersects uh, sigma exists, right? So this one is maximum principal stress, sigma 1, while this one is minimum principal stress, which is sigma 2. All right? So, so for sigma 1, what is this? It is the radius, right? CB is radius minus 6. That is sigma 1. All right? While for sigma 2, it is what? It is 6, sorry, minus 6 minus radius, isn't it? The coordinate of that. From 0, 0, sigma equals 0, the, the tau exists. You go minus 6 to point C, and then you go further radius, okay, which is 8.49 to, to reach point D. So it is minus 6 minus 8.49. So you got this sigma 1 and sigma 2. So you have your principal stresses are. 2.49 uh, tensile and 14.5 uh, compression, right? And how about the angle? Okay. The angle is, you see, from point A, re remember this point is the reference point. How do you reach point from A to D or A to B? In this case, uh, okay, let's do this, A to D. From A to D, how do you do that? You need to rotate it, see, from A to D, anti-clockwise, isn't it? So this is the angle. 2 theta p2, right? Remember, theta p is the angle that you rotate to reach the principal, principal stress, right? Theta p2 means that the, uh, the to reach the principal stress of theta 2, uh, sorry, sigma 2, right? This one, point B. Of course, you rotate to B, then it becomes 2 theta p, uh, q theta p1, right? But this one, you rotate from A to D, so Point D is sigma 2, so it is 2 theta P2, right? Why 2? Because remember, in most circle, it is twice the angle of the, the original the, the original state of stress, right? <clears throat> so you can find this angle, right? The angle is, so basically if you do tangent, tangent 2 theta P2, you will have 6 over 12 minus 6, right? And then you have you will have your theta p2 as 32.5. What does it mean by that? It simply means, right? It simply means from this x axis, see this x axis, you rotate it 22.5 uh, degree anti-clockwise, you will reach this sigma 2. 
which is on this surface, you or on this x prime axis, you have this 14.5 megapascal compression, which is sigma 2. Right? On the other hand, okay, when you rotate from A, which is X, okay, you rotate it to this, right, and then you reach sigma 1, right, which is this 2.49 megapascal, right? So it is 90 plus 2.5 degree angle, right? Oh, sorry, this one. Okay. Now we go to the next example. Okay, before this one we find the principal stress. Yes, principal stress. Now we'll find the maximum inclination stress. So here again, I want to go quickly. So you have sigma x of minus twenty, sigma y plus ninety, tau x y plus sixty. Okay, and then define this. Right, so the question asks you to find the maximum inclination stress. At this point, you use your Mohr circle. So you, you see the center, okay? The center is the average, sigma x plus sigma y over 2. Okay, you got this average of 35. So it is to the right, right? Sigma x, uh, sorry, sigma uh, exists to the right. Tau exists going down. So uh, the coordinate of C is 35, 0, right? 35, 0, right? And then the reference is sigma x, tau x, y, which is this reference A. Okay, it is minus 20 for sigma plus 90 for, for this is minus 20 okay, for sigma and plus 60 for tau. And then you, you have the C and A, you can find the radius which is basically, yeah, just look it. I mean, okay, this is 35, right? From uh, C to the tau axis, right? And then from tau exists to A is 20, isn't it? So 35 plus 20 is 55. This one. And then, of course, this one is 60, right? Because this look this the, the same as tau xy. So 60. 60 squared plus 55 squared. So you have your radius, which is uh 81.4. So you, you have this radius, you root uh you draw the circle. Of course, this is your again sigma one, this is your sigma two, right? But here, if you are interested with your principal stresses, you are interested with this, which is the tau max, tau max in plane, all right? So you rotate this from A, the reference point A to uh, E, okay? Uh, yeah, point E. Point E, which is the maximum, the location of the maximum inclination stress. That's what you want to find. And then you need to find the angle, which is the angle is 2 theta S1. Right to find this angle, okay. Basically, tau max here, like I said, it is actually equals to the radius itself, right? So the radius is 81.4, so the tau max in plane is 81.4, right? The average is uh, sorry, uh, and then the, the normal, normal stress that that uh that is applied to the four surfaces are the average, which is 35, right. And you can see it from here actually. You see that this at point C, what is the coordinate of this point C? What is point C? Sorry, point E, right? Point E is sigma average, isn't it? The sigma is sigma average. The tau is tau max or R, right? So that's why you have sigma average and you have the tau max in plane, which is R, the radius, right? And how about the angle? How much it, it needs to be rotated? So this is 2 theta S1. Again, 2 because in most of it, it is twice of the real angle. Okay? So you need to find what is this length, right? And what is this length? Of course, you, this length, the horizontal length, you already got that, 35 and 20. And of course, the, this one you have found as well. This is 60, right? So this is 60. Well, this is, uh, how much is it? Uh, 55, right? So you do tangent. Tangent 2 theta S1 equal to 55 or 60, okay? This one. And then you solve that one. You will have your theta S1 equals to 21.3 degree. Okay? What does it mean by that? It means from reference point A to E, you rotate it 21 point degree, and then you will reach your principal 
uh, sorry, uh, uh, maximum internship stress. So again, you start with your X, right? The X from before, X exists from before. You rotate it 21.3, which is the principal, uh, not principal, the maximum angle, right? Maximum stress angle, maximum shear stress angle. Okay, 21.0 degree, anti-clockwise. Okay, why? Because you rotate there. Okay, from the most you see that you have to rotate anti-clockwise to 21.3. And then at this point, you reach what? You reach point E, which is sigma average and tau max. So you have sigma average. Okay, 5 megapascal, positive. And you have your tau max, which is 81.4 megapascal. Positive, right? At point E, this is positive tau max, right? Positive tau max. So that's why on this surface that you rotated, you have 81.4 megapascal going up. All right? And then the rest are complementary. Okay? This and this and that. Of course, that let's say sigma average of 35 megapascal will be applied to all four, uh, uh, all four faces. And the rest of the shear stresses are the complementary shear stress. Of course, if you want to rotate again and also you can do that, okay? To find this, for instance, uh, the one here, you can rotate and then you will see, okay? <laughs> what you have to do is you rotate to point F and then you see what happened, right? If you rotate to point F, okay, then you will get this one, right? <clears throat> okay, now we have done with the maximum. Which is the principal stresses, right? The max, uh, the 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 maximum of normal stress and the uh, maximum implicit stress. Okay, maximum for the shear stress. So now we we want to see that actually it doesn't have. I mean, this most circle or the one that you have done before the general equation for the stress deformation, you can do this for any rotation, right? For instance, in this in this uh, example, uh, the the question asks you to find what happened to this state of stress if you rotate this 30 degree anti-clockwise, right? So you have to rotate this 30 degree anti-clockwise, right? From this to this, right? And this theta equals to positive 30 degree, right? Of course, we have not gone very far now. Sigma x equals to minus this, right? Sigma y equals to plus this while tau xy equals to minus this, isn't it? Okay, this is what you got. You can find the average uh, to find the center, right? And then from the center, C, and then the reference point A, <coughs> the form is, is what? Sigma, sigma x tau xy, isn't it? Okay, you can find the radius. Okay, this is your radius to find the radius. And then what you have to do is from this more circle, Okay, from CA, of course, you draw the circle first, okay, with the radius of 11.66. And then what happens is that you rotate how much? The question asks you to find what happens if you rotate this 30 degree anti-clockwise, right? So you have to rotate anti-clockwise 60 degree. This one, 60 degree. Why 60 degree? Again, more circle is always twice of the is twice of the the angle in the most circle is twice of the angle that you rotate in the for the the uh, the state of stress okay the plane right <clears throat> so what what is the idea here if you rotate you see if you rotate it 60 degree in this uh most circle which is equivalent to the degree of the real uh plane element you see that from a you rotate you you reach point p Okay. So this point P, sigma x prime here and tau x prime y prime will be the state of stress of that element when you rotate it 30 degrees. You understand that? Right? So you, you have to rotate from A to P, 60 degrees in the most circle to, to get this point P, which is the coordinate is sigma x prime, tau x prime y prime, which are the state of stress. Okay, so of course, you, when you want to do this, you need to find the angle here, right? Because it's 60, so you have to find this angle first, right? This uh, phi angle. Okay, so how to find, do that? You have to do tangent theta equals to 6. Oh, okay, it's fine as well. So you can do tangent theta, which is 6 uh, over 
8 plus 2, which is 10, right? This is 5, right? And then, of course, this angle is 60 minus 5, right? So you get 29.4, which is this angle. Why do you need to have this angle? Because, can you see this? This is C, right? And this is P. So this is the angle, right? You know that this is 11.66, the radius. This is C, this is P. This is the angle that you need to find, which was 29, okay? This is 29 degree angle. If you know this, you can find what is this, right? And what is this? If you know this, then you can find the coordinate of P, and that is the state of stress of sigma x prime of x prime of prime, right? So that's what you do. So for sigma x prime, it is uh, 2 minus a2, 2, and then going beyond that, okay, to have this, uh, sorry, this is actually 11.66, right? And then what is this distance? 11.66. You have the radius of okay, the hypotenuse of 11.66, right? <clears throat> so if you do cosine, okay, you do cosine, cosine 29 equals to that one over 11, right? So that's what you do. And for tau x prime y prime, okay, what you do is you take this distance, which is sine. 11.66 sine 29, right? And this one. So you see, this is sigma x prime, and this is tau x prime y prime, right? And then what you do, you have to do next is you rotate that 30 degree. You see, from x to x prime 30 degree, you will have your compressive stress of 820. Uh, sorry, 8.2 megapascal, isn't it? And and you have tau x prime y prime, which is positive 5.66. That's why it goes up, cut off up, right? Okay. While on the other hand, for the other surface, right? <clears throat> what you have to do is you have to go to the other side, which is point Q. Okay. So you need to rotate from A to Q. So all the way from A to Q is. This is 60, so this is 125. Uh, sorry, 120, isn't it? Because the 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 line, uh, the angle of the line is 180. So this is 120. So you need to rotate from A to Q, you need to rotate 120. And it is equivalent to how much? 120 divided by 2 is 60 degree clockwise, isn't it? You rotate clockwise from A to Q. Right? So at that point, you can find your sigma x prime and top x prime y prime, okay, to be this and this. So you see, on this, the E, okay, this is basically coordinate, okay, 12.22 and minus 5.66, okay, this one of coordinate of this, which is uh, 12 and minus 6, isn't it, 12 minus 6, uh, something like that, 12 and minus 6, My, minus 5.6, right? So you see what happened on this surface, okay? You rotate it from x, the reference, right? The reference is a, point a. You rotate it 60 degree clockwise, you will reach your tensile tension stress of 12.2 megapascal, and you will have your shear stress of 5.66 megapascal, and it goes down 5.66. Why? Because it is minus. Okay, of course, the rest will be complementary, right? Okay, we will solve this uh, tutorial, Allah, 9, 11, and 54, and that's end, the end for chapter 9. Thank you.